Dry ice is a really remarkable substance. You probably learned already that it's carbon dioxide in a solid state. But uh, even the simple act of just putting a little chunk of it into, uh, into some water, that's really quite fascinating. They call it dry ice because it doesn't melt. Perhaps they call it dry ice because when you put it in water, it doesn't get wet. I would argue that that piece of dry ice has not even touched the water yet. That's because all across its surface, it's subliming and essentially preventing the dry ice from actually coming in contact with the water. And this beautiful mist here, that's not carbon dioxide you're looking at. It's showing you where the carbon dioxide's going, but that's actually little tiny droplets of H2O in the liquid state that form when the humidity in the room, especially the humidity over this water, uh, condenses into little tiny droplets. So what would happen if I add a little bit of detergent to this situation here? Ever tried it? Maybe it just never dawned on you. <laughs> okay, so here we go. Doesn't take much. Huh. Doesn't appear to have much of an effect. It was worth a try. We do see some bubbles climbing up here very gradually. But uh, see the mist is getting a little bit less. And all at once, by magic, they make their way to the surface. And these are rather remarkable bubbles if you watch them for a while. As they pop, you might see a little burst of smoke, mist come out of them. And they spill over pretty quickly because, after all, carbon dioxide, rather dense. I'm going to wet my hand because a wet hand is less likely to pop those bubbles. And if I grab a fistful of them here, and we could just have the camera focus on that, they almost seem alive. But if you watch them carefully, they're doing something rather unusual. You don't often see bubbles do this. They're shrinking. Very few of them have actually popped. Okay? Just to compare that with how big they were to begin with, they're shrinking. Why would a carbon dioxide bubble shrink so quickly? Well, that has to do with the fact that carbon dioxide is relatively soluble in water. That's what soda is all about, carbonated water. And we're going to turn to this diagram of the carbon dioxide molecule. It's linear, of course, and that's why it ends up being nonpolar. But even still, there is a pretty strong charge separation as the, as the oxygen atoms hog the electrons toward them. And with these negative portions of the molecule, you're going to have the chance for hydrogen bonding to occur between the H on the water molecule and these very strongly negative oxygens. So even though it's a nonpolar gas, it's quite soluble, much more so than, for instance, oxygen, O2, nitrogen, N2, hydrogen, methane. So bubbles of carbon dioxide shrink pretty rapidly. Okay? In fact, that's a nice little illustration right there, how they start off big, and as they descend down, look at how this tapers off as the bubbles get smaller. Okay? We'll drop one more piece in there to kind of dramatize that. Okay? A little bit more going. Again, they start off big, but they get small. Now, we'll leave that going. Okay? Get another piece. And the fact that it spills over a result of the density, here's a nice little thing I just happened upon a few years back. A little cup with a snap-on lid that has a hole in it. You might get an icy mocha in that. We'll put a piece of the dry ice in there. And this takes some practice, but it certainly is worth it. I'm giving this cup a little squeeze, and when I do so, I can get, oh, we've got some air currents in the room. We'll see how this works. Little smoke rings coming out. Those showing? There's a good one. Ooh, that was a really good one. Okay. Um, the third demonstration in this series here is kind of like this, but different. I've got a bucket here about half filled with some warm water. I'm going to drop in a nice size chunk of dry ice here, about the size of a small fist. Get that bubbling away. 
And this is just some soapy water, same as I got there. Dawn works really well. And a paper towel. The paper towel has to be big enough to span the diameter of the bucket here. And first I'm going to need to wet the rim. I don't want to get the soap down in there. I just want to put a film across the surface here. And that might take a sweep or two. There we go. Once you've got that going, you've got something that almost takes on a life of its own. It's got some beautiful colors to it. You've seen, that's a nice physics demonstration. The color being a function of how thick that soap film is, and you get these concentric rings as the soap film is thinnest at the top and gets thicker and thicker at the bottom. You can also do this. I was just blowing little jets of air onto it at just the right rate. Caused a good example of resonance. The thing started wobbling like crazy. And I'll put another film across there. Okay. It's kind of worthy to note that if I put a dry finger in there, of course I'll pop it. But a wet finger has no trouble getting in and out. <laughs> and it is kind of neat, the sudden cascade of carbon dioxide that happens when it does pop. Good one to do around Halloween, this one. I've got a flashlight, and this is one of those ones that is waterproof. And we're going to want to turn the lights down. I'm going to put this in there. And I think we're going to want it down. Yeah, go to all off. And now as the bubble inflates, you get this wonderful misty glow. It shows some nice scattering of the light because you don't see the beam of the flashlight. It just looks like the light's coming from all around. I can do this again. The colors show up beautifully too with that lit background. So some fun stuff to do around Halloween with carbon dioxide. This bubble is also shrinking at the same time it's growing. That is CO2 is leaking out of it. You can turn the lights back up you won't get the effect of the flashlight. But if you get just the right amount, you can get that bubble stabilized. And that is, it's bubbling, you can hear it. So the CO2 is being produced, but it's leaking out at the same rate. And we're almost there. I think this is still a little bit high on the CO2 because it's about to spill over and break. And it's that spilling over, by the way, that's going to happen. It's coming toward me right now. There it goes. Boom. OK. Um, that led to this next one. Let me put one more film across this just so we can appreciate it. We got all these wonderful demonstrations going at the same time. Again, you try not to drip too much soap down into it. Okay. And this one might now reach that point because each time I do it, the, the piece of dry is getting smaller and smaller. So the rate at which it's bubbling is decreasing. So we might see this one stabilize like I was talking about. So here's a nice little setup. This is not one soda bottle. It's two. Can you see that? That there was one that was cut off there and then a second one that was cut off about here so that this fits inside there and just a little friction fit, okay? And I've put some warm water in here and some PVC pipes. That's a piece of paper towel that's wrapped around the end of it here. And I'm going to lift this down so I can soak this with some soapy water. It's been used before, but uh, it still should be pretty absorbent. You don't have to have the paper towel there, but it helps keep a good reservoir of soapy water available. And I'm going to get a soap film across there now. This is a little bit of a messy one, but it's just messy with soapy water. Okay, and we're going to take and put a couple pieces of dry ice in here. Oop. And now watch the very first one that forms here. That is the air that was in the tube. And there's the beautiful mist coming in. You see how it went to the bottom and it's filling up like that? That's getting heavier and heavier, you can tell. And that bubble fall, falls at a pretty fast clip because it's about half air, half CO2. But this next one, being pure CO2, falls much faster. And this is called the CO2 leaky faucet because it looks like just drip, drip, drip. And if I tried catching one of these, of course, with a dry hand, I don't stand a chance. With a wet hand, 
and this water in here is still pretty warm. That might surprise you. CO2 is dry, so it's not very good at cooling down water. If I catch it with a wet hand, perhaps. Oh, had it for a second. Let me see if I can get one here. Come on. Oh, I'm going to do it this way instead, though. Just using a nice new, newly washed shirt. Let's see if we can't catch a couple of these bubbles here. <laughs> it helps to have a newly washed shirt. The ions and the detergent help to essentially repel the bubble. And I don't know if you can see or not, but this bubble is definitely shrieking as I talk right now. It's getting gradually smaller and smaller. I've done this in a lecture hall that had a carpeted floor that was newly wa freshly washed. Oh, there it goes. And um, they formed and kind of bounced across the floor and formed like a string of pearls that got smaller and smaller. Um, so, some wonderful examples of some dry ice demonstrations you can do. And um, be careful. Again, you saw me wearing gloves when I picked up the dry ice. It's at negative 78 degrees Celsius, which is uh, cold enough to cause frostbite. But um, these demonstrations, very easy to do and well worth it. They really capture the student's imagination. Thank you.